Guys, today we got to talk a little bit about the internet. The internet is amazing, but it should serve you. It should not serve our overlords looking to spy on us. The easiest way to not be spied on on the internet is by using a VPN. That's a virtual private network. Long story short, it makes the internet think you're somewhere else. And the, one of the best VPNs out there is privateinternetaccess.com. This is a no log VPN, true no log, meaning they don't follow you around the internet. They have over 2,600 servers globally that will allow you to shop online anonymously, to not be tracked by your ISP, and to enjoy geo-restricted content anywhere in the world. PrivateInternetAccess.com is a trusted VPN with truly a no-log promise. Remember a couple months back, we heard about all those VPNs that were promising no-log, but then they got busted for logging and following you? You know what one wasn't mentioned? PrivateInternetAccess.com, guys. Special deal for you guys at PrivateInternetAccess.com slash tire, $2.59 a month plus three months for free. Use privateinternetaccess.com slash tire and get $2.59 a month plus three months for free from Private Internet Access. Now enjoy this video. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to a beautiful early morning here in uh, the canyons with, oof, this is a very special car, folks. This is the AMG GTR Roadster. And you may be thinking, hang on, they made a Roadster of that? Yes, they did. It's limited to 750 units worldwide. It is mechanically identical to the AMG GTR Coupe, except it has the soft top. Uh, it is a $26,800 premium over the GTR Coupe if you want that soft top. You still get the same twin turbo 4 liter V8 making 577 horsepower at 6250 RPM and 516 pounds of torque uh, from 2100 to 5500. The whole engine is mounted behind the front axle which makes this a true front mid-engine vehicle. Uh, it weighs 3750 pounds. It's about 85 pounds heavier than uh, the Coupe. Uh, it'll do 0 to 6 60 and 3.2, the quarter mile in 11.1, and that those both of those numbers are actually heavily traction limited. Um, this same engine we know can make uh, like 100 horsepower more in other Mercedes products, such as the E63S wagon. Speaking of which, the E63S wagon, because it has all-wheel drive, is actually two tenths of a second faster to 60. But if you want zero to 60, a rear wheel drive Roadster probably isn't for you. Trust me, this thing is fast. The coupe version of this was actually the sixth fastest car ever at uh, Car and Driver's Lightning Lap last year. Um, the GTR versus the C we drove a couple weeks ago has some weight reduction, a lighter exhaust, it has dynamic engine and transmission mounts, it has a recalibrated suspension, uh, ceramic brakes, uh, Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires and a 275 front, 325 rear, and, all, and for the Roadster, there's some additional carbon fiber bracing under the hood and uh, around the transmission tunnel. You've got aerodynamics such as the wing, the diffuser, and the front splitter. And uh, the rest of it is a standard AMG GT fare. But we are going to put this thing in dynamic, manual, and we're going to go with our sport shock because sport plus on the shocks can be a little bit abusive, even on good roads. So, let's have a drive. As we learned, when we drove the GTC, uh, it really seems like AMG has out Aston Aston. The proportions are fabulous. Very long nose. You're sitting on the rear axle. It creates the uh, this luxurious long axle to dash ratio. Really takes you back to sort of the golden age of motorsport. And it's very, very fast. Let's put the windows up so you can actually hear me. 
really reminds you of those old SLR racers from the 50s, right? Properly retro future. The engine is a real sweetheart. Even though it is not the most powerful version that Mercedes makes, uh, this car absolutely rips. The zero to 60 and the quarter mile are impressive, but it's really, it's really about how it takes a high speed bend. It's about how planted it feels through very fast corners. It's about maintaining entry speed and really getting the power down early. It's got a beautifully calibrated traction control system that allows you to use more throttle earlier than you would think for a rear drive car. And even though you're sitting on the back axle, the turn-in is super, super sharp, so it has mid-engine-like handling characteristics. You're just sitting in a different place to deal with them. Let's go second gear from three. Yeah, yeah. This thing has a funky exhaust setup that comes with a center exit as well as two side exits. It sounds incredible. It's really very thumpy and angry. It's got a lot of attitude. It's one of my favorite cars to drive slowly through a parking lot or back out of a parking space. It does have a distinct sound separate from the GTC. And in fact, it sounds so good, it makes me reconsider that turbocharged engines need to be quiet. We keep making this excuse for manufacturers that, oh well, the engine's quiet, some supercar engine is too quiet, but the turbos quiet it down. This has turbos. Why did it sound good? What have they done that Audi hasn't done, that Ferrari hasn't done? What, are they, what have they done here? Four liter twin turbos, the formula is there. No burble tunes, unnecessary. Thing really rips off downshifts very accurately. The turn in is really good. And if you can get the back end to step out on you just a little bit because of where you are, feels kind of accentuated, it's really good. Really good, easy to, easy to get it back. All right, can I get by this person? Uh, very comfortable vehicle. Plenty of room for tall drivers, even with the top up. I've been super comfortable in this thing uh, all week. I got a, uh, I got a flat tire uh, seven miles into my first drive, so shout out to uh, Page One, Mercedes uh, fleet management company, for getting me a new tire. There's a turnout just here. And if this person is uh, attentive to their driving, they will use it. We're going to see if this Honda CRV is aware of how turnouts work. Good news is the GTR, when you're driving slow, it's very nice. Thank you, sir or ma'am. Nice to drive slow, it's not a pain in the ass. Easy to use as a car. The trunk is a decent size. While the GTC didn't have any problem with front clearance, I have gotten a couple small scrapes on this one. Nose lift is not a thing with these cars. The speed is there, guys. I mean, they say 577 horsepower, that's plenty, but it really feels like more. It really feels like it gets the power to the ground very effectively. You want to use that squeeze, right? It's not a stab, it's a squeeze. Ride that wave of torque. The brakes can be a little bit grabby. These are the ceramics. 
in town. I had to apologize to my friends a couple times for being a little jerky on the brakes. Up here, when you're doing big repeated haul downs, ah. The seven speed dual clutch gearbox is fabulous. Does what it's told. I love the view over the long snout. I mean, totally unique. Hey, that was a Hyundai prototype. Prototype testing very early up here today. It's like the kind of car you want to strap a stick of TNT on and drive it into the sun, you know what I mean? It's like a Hail Mary end of the world type car. Like if I was going to Thelma and Louise something, this would be the appropriate vehicle for that. Big power, pulls really hard in the fifth gear, really hard. The steering is so sharp. You're not used to sitting this far back in the car and have your steering wheels being so far away and then also having such a sharp turn in. It's got slightly wider wheels and tires than the GTC, which can cause it to be a little bit darty you know, in the city and on the highway. So it's not quite as relaxed a GT car as the GTC is. But up here, sharp as attack, guys. The shocks just have really, really good body control. When you have a negative G hump, it really maintains your contact patch very well. And because the fronts are only 275s, you don't have the super tram line. It can be a little darty, but it's not crazy tram lining. And when you get on the brakes, it, it holds straight. It's constant. Crossing 4,500 feet, but really still making plenty of power. Not like the Lexus LC500, which was a fabulous car, but up at this altitude, started to know, notice a little power loss. This thing is still humming. Big power. And so much grip. I took an on-ramp the other day with a friend in the car at such a pace that they asked me if that was the traction control or purely mechanical grip. And it was purely mechanical grip. so low and so wide and the weight is really centered in the vehicle it's really it is as optimized as a front engine car can be for handling and it, the and the GTR's successes on the racetrack i think demonstrate that a big speed on camber corner and let those G's just suck you into the seat right here this is the bend this is the bend where the arrow is really gonna stick it oh that's fabulous look at this oh that's good Gordon Ramsay, chipmunk lived, it lived. To quote Gordon Ramsay, wow, wow, wow. The uh, the AMG GTR is a, is a fabulous sports car. Uh, this one is two hundred and ten thousand dollars, right? But 
You could save 25 grand by not getting the convertible. That's up to you. I'd probably skip it. Um, my friend Johnny Lieberman referred to the GTC that I drove a couple years ago as the Goldilocks model. It has most of the power. It has the wider body work. It has basically the same interior, and it has enough of the good suspension and brake setup that you can go really, really fast in the canyons. But it's a little softer and a little easier to use every single day compared to the GTR. The GTR is a little more hardcore. It's not painful to drive, but it is very uh, firm. And so you may not want to daily it. Um, but these things are rad. I like driving them more than I've liked any Aston Martin in the last few years. And the engine is fabulous, the chassis is fabulous, and the control, the fact that it, it doesn't override you and try and outsmart you. If you want to drive, it will let you drive. It's, it's really, really good. So shout out to Mercedes for letting me have a go. Love it. Shout out to Page One for getting me that new tire so quickly so my week with the car wasn't a waste. And shout out to you for watching me rambling about cars. I'll see you next time. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off